No hands? Oh, not yet. Well, just a little bit of keyboard hands. Are huh? we clear? Make sure you keep an eye on the knees there. Good to go. Hey, guys, how are we doing? We're doing good. So we're going out for a Sunday drive, right? Five, ten miles an hour? Something uh, like that? Totally. All right. On the roof the of Google a parking self-driving deck. car. We are in a self-driving car. You get to hold the keyboard. I do. Wait, there's characters on here I don't recognize. <laughs> Team will never oh my goodness. Go is the right word. Holy, Holy There's no hands on that wheel. Oh my god. Google is making the leap from search engines to car what? engines, but not for just any car. The new Google car is unlike itself. anything else in the world because it drives itself. Let's talk about Google's motivation here real quick. I mean, we got the gist of the story in the feed, which is they've had these uh, automated cars on the road uh, for a little while now. But why is Google getting into the self-driving car business? Is this just so they have a way to transport their cyborgs when they eventually take over the world? Yeah, you, you heard that right. Google, the internet company, has been seeking and working on a sophisticated combination of hardware and software. A couple of bloggers and tech writers have spotted these cars in the wild since, I believe, last November. But at the time, they, they, they thought that they were the Google mapping cars. Do we know how long Google has actually been testing these autonomous vehicles? Cruise control. Then cars that park themselves. And then ones that helped you avoid fender benders. But now... It uses cameras inside to spot traffic lights and other things. It also uses this thing on the top, which is a scanning laser. turned 18, I lost my best friend to a car accident, and then I decided I dedicated my life to saving one million people every year. I need to tell you a little bit about self-driving cars, the hardware, the software. We made it learn from us, and we set it free in the desert. And the unimaginable happened. It became the first car to ever return from a double band challenge, yet I still haven't saved a single life. Since our work has focused on building driving cars that can drive anywhere by themselves. Any street in California, you've driven 140,000 miles. Our cars have sensors on which they magically can see everything around them and make decisions about every aspect of driving. You've driven in cities, We've driven from San Francisco to Los Angeles in Highway 1 to encounter joggers, busy highways, tall booths, and this is without a person in the loop. The car just drives itself. In fact, while we drove 140,000 miles, people didn't even know it. Now, I can't get my friend Harold back to life, but I can do something for all the people who died. Did you know that driving accidents are the number one cause of death for young people? And do you realize that almost all of those are due to human error and not machine error? Do you realize that we could change the capacity 
of highways by a factor of two or three if we didn't rely on human precision in staying in the lane and do away with all traffic jams on highways? Do you realize that you spend an average of 52 minutes per day in traffic wasting your time uh, on your daily commute? This is four billion hours wasted in this country alone and it's 2.4 billion gallons of gasoline wasted. I think there's a vision here, a new technology, and I'm really looking forward to a time when generations after us look back at us and say how ridiculous it was that humans were driving cars.